So the annual financial report, um, those of you that were in office um, starting in January, you're very familiar with this report, I'm sure, um, because it was due uh, February 29th. It is required by statute and it, um, as you know, it is the report of the year's financial activity for your unit. Um, it is required uh, to be completed 60 days after year end, so the next one is going to be March 1 of 2021. Um, we, um, let's see, it has been updated, of course, for the 2019 uh, regulatory changes, but if you've heard anything about 2020 regulatory changes, those have been put on hold. So the annual financial report uh, that was due in, on February 29th of 2020 um, will have the same format basically as the one that's going to be due March uh, first of 2021. There's not any substantial uh, changes to that report, which is great news. Um, internal control considerations. I wanted to mention this here and, and we'll mention it again uh, when we do some training on internal controls. But one of the common report findings we see has to do with internal controls over the uh, financial close and the, the annual financial report. And what we're seeing is that there's not a segregation of duties or a review process involved with the entering of this information. So the tip, the comment that we usually see is that there was no review, approval, or verification process in place over the information that was submitted um, in the annual financial report. So you need to think of a way that you can have such a review process in place. Um, and then there are two parts of that. One, you need to write it down, what your process is. And the other part of that is that you need to have evidence that it was performed. So just as an example, if you are a, a one person office and you don't have anybody in your office to review the information that was um, being submitted for the annual financial report, you might have a president of the council uh, come in and review that information to the ledger. And you would just need to write down that process that the, um, the council president will be reviewing the information um, filed with, or submitted in the annual financial report with the, the ledgers and you can um, name off the specific information there. And then the second part of that would be the, the council president will signify approval um, by uh, any number of ways. It could be by sending a return email, it could be by signing a document or completing a checklist. However you would want to do that, um, just make sure that you have a process in place for that. And if you have any questions on that, you can, of course, give us a call. Now, the annual financial report, uh, for those of you who have completed it um, for this year, for 2019, um, you know that that's a really big report. Um, so now it's a good time to gather information um, post or reconcile your records to complete information for your financial data by fund, which is your uh, basically your ledger of receipts, disbursements, and balances. Make sure that that is always posted up to date. Um, your capital asset information, which is the schedule uh, 369 or form 369, um, that has information for your capital assets for beginning balance and any additions or reductions and your ending balance, so make sure that that information is up to date. If your unit does not maintain capital asset information, that would be a good thing to call us about. We can walk you through that process. Um, any grants that you receive, it's a good time to start collecting the, uh, the formal grant name, the CFDA number, uh, the grant award amount, um, keeping your grant agreements in one place, and um, then just keeping the financial activity posted. Um, Long-term debt and leases, um, you'll need to be reporting the beginning balance and any additions or reductions um, in your ending balance for those. Um, if you've given, if you, meaning your unit, has given financial assistance to non-governmental entities, then um, that amount uh, will be need to be reported and who that was given to. Um, there will be uh, questions related to pensions. Um, you'll need to list your inner fund transfers and uh, answer some risk assessment questions. Now, if you haven't completed an annual financial report, meaning that you're you're new since since March 1st, or even if you struggled with the one from 2019, 
we will be providing a lot more training on each one of these areas for you as that time draws near. So um, again, if you have any questions now on how you might want to organize your records to make it easier um, for you at the beginning of the year, um, let us know that um, and just be, uh, be aware that we'll be doing some more training. Okay, the 100R is the Certified Report of Names, Duties, and Compensation. Um, this report is also required by statute and it's due uh, by January 31 every year. So the next one is due January 31, uh, 2021. And this is just where you record the compensation, uh, the name, title, department, and business address of every employee of your unit. Um, we have we will not have any changes to the reporting. Um, so the one that you entered on January 31, 2020 will be in substantially the same format as the next one. And you have the same internal control considerations for the uh, 100R on having that, that information reviewed. Uh, the next application I want to mention is monthly uploads in Gateway. Um, we might be making some tweaks to the information that's required for this um, because of the new um, way that we're doing this virtual audit process. But right now, um, this is the information that I know about, and this is required to be uploaded monthly uh, in Gateway through that application. And the first thing is your bank reconcilement. Um, in the monthly uploads, it's not required at this time that you have your bank statement uploaded, just the reconcilement. Uh, we do need board minutes um, and those would be boards, uh, at least at this current time, boards that have financial activity such as your council or your board of works or redevelopment commission or economic development commission um, or your park board. Those would be the type of minutes that we need here and you can provide a link to those. I'll show you that in a few minutes um, in Gateway. And then their funds ledger, which is your ledger of receipts, disbursements, and balances. Um, we would need the totals for the month for um, beginning balance, receipts, disbursements, and ending balance. So if you're not doing those monthly uploads, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, or you have never seen that before, um, again, just give us a call and we'll be happy to get you started um, in that area. Um, the next area is the annual uploads, and sometimes um, these get forgotten in the shadow of the um, AFR, but they too are due on uh, March 1st every year, and there's a list of them. You can see them in that box on the right side um, there at the bottom of the, at the corner of the screen. So all of that is due um, on an annual basis, and I'll show you where you can check uh, in a few minutes to make sure that those have been uploaded for 2019. Um, the first item is a bank statement. It's just the December bank statement for this year, be December 2020, um, for each bank account that you have. You are not required to upload images of checks, um, and you don't put your reconcilement here. Um, that is where the that's going to go in the monthly upload category. Um, you also need to submit annually an outstanding checklist, which is a, which is a detailed list of those checks that were written but did not yet clear the bank. And your total uh, should agree to the amount you show on your reconcilement. You're going to want to include a check date, uh, the check number, and the amount. Investment statements are similar to the bank statement information, just that year-end statement for all your investment accounts. Um, detail of receipt activity is a report that can be run through your accounting software. It does not apply if you have hand posted records. Um, and it is going to be include a list of all of your receipt numbers. Detail of disbursement activity is similar. It is a report that would be run by your computer software, so it does not apply if you have hand posted records. And that's going to include your check numbers and the vendor names. Also required annually is your current year salary ordinance and what they mean by current year there is the year that you're entering information for. 
So when you do the 2020 annual uploads, you're going to put in the 2020 salary ordinance and any amendments that have been made to that ordinance um, for that information. A vendor history report again is another computer report that it can be run from your software. Um, that again does not apply if you have hand posted records um, and that should show a total by vendor of all disbursements made to a particular vendor. Okay, there are a few other reports that I want to talk to you about Now, these are not in gateway. Um, but it is important that you know that it is your responsibility to report certain things to us. And this is required by statute. Um, it's in Indiana Code 5-11-1-27. And what it says is that all erroneous or irregular material, variances, losses, shortages, or thefts shall be reported to the state board of accounts. And uh, an emphasis on one word in here, material, that is going to have to be defined by your unit because not every, all units, their materiality level is going to be different. And there is a state examiner directive 2015-6, uh, which discusses uh, a materiality threshold. So let's say, for example, um, your, your council has determined that anything under $500 you will take care of in-house, meaning that you'll go ahead and investigate that and um, and figure out what, let's say, a variance is. If it's over $500, and you would want to report that to our agency. That's kind of how that works. So your unit should have already in place, actually, a materiality threshold. So you'll want to try and find that policy if you're not, if, if you don't have it already. Now, if you've got a new council this year, they may want to revisit that. They may want to adjust uh, that materiality threshold, and they certainly um, can do that, but they're not required to do that just because they are um, a new council. There's also another um, report if you should come across the unfortunate event of a misappropriation of funds. Um, then that has to be reported to our agency in writing, um, regardless of it, regardless of any materiality level. I mean, there is no materiality level. Um, it has to be reported to our agency and the county prosecuting attorney. Um, and an example of that would be if an employee uses the town credit card for personal expenses, um, that you would have to report to us. And for either one of these, um, you know, you, if you have a question on um, how it should be reported or whether it should be reported, please feel free to call us or email us and um, we'll be happy to, to guide you through that process. There are places on our website to report this information and I'll show you that here in a few minutes. Other information that should be filed with the Board of Accounts. Um, in Gateway, uh, you are required to upload your official bond. And if any conflict of interest statements have been filed by your um, the people that work for your unit um, under 3544.1-1-4, if they have one of those conflict of interest statements, they should be filed and uploaded in Gateway. Now, we would appreciate it if you would send to cities.towns at sboa.in.gov. Um, any new interlocal agreements that you have that your town has entered into or city has entered into um, so that we can have those for our records. Um, also, if you have a change in fiscal officer or change in contact information for a fiscal officer, we need to know that too. Um, and then if there are any audit requirements for debt issuance, um, that helps us to be able to plan um, our audits uh, so that those can get done to meet your needs. So the sooner we have that information, um, the better off we are. And you can always contact us uh, with this information here. You can call us or you can email us. Um, if you'd like to um, video chat, we can set up a video chat. We're, we're happy to do any of that. 